Okay, the last advantage to agglomeration or where agglomeration comes from is this sharing uh, knowledge that basically comes from learning from others. That learning, as I'm closer to my uh, competitors, I can learn from them. Um, and this advantage oftentimes outweighs the fact that my employers might learn from me and steal something from me since like we're always kind of pushing the technological frontier uh, forward. So, you know, if I'm an innovative firm, it doesn't matter that much that people are stealing my stuff. I can just out um, innovate them. But this kind of combining of techniques, learning about them really is facilitated by being, you know, near your competitors. And it can come by just like kind of seeing what they're doing and seeing their products and kind of guessing and, you know, reverse engineering, or it can come directly from, you know, employing people that worked there um, and then learning from them. Or it can come from just workers hanging out with each other. I mean, famously in the early days of Silicon Valley, this happened at a bar called the Wagon Wheel, where all the engineers and all the computer scientists would all hang out at this bar called, called the Wagon Wheel. And you know, you could just go table to table and hear high level conversations about, um, uh, 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 about technology. You know, and some of this, you know, sometimes happens, you know, um, you know, say with, with, even with, within economics departments, you know, where it's like, you know, getting up uh, uh, or getting together for lunch with your colleagues, you kind of find out what's going on in their field, what they are doing, the techniques they're using, and then you may adopt it um, in, in your research. Okay. Um, so anyways, this is just the spillovers that comes from uh, uh, proximity. All right. This is a great, great quote from Alfred Marshall, just talking about it, um, kind of just being um, in, uh, in the air. All right. Actually, I'll, just, I'll just read it. When an industry has chosen locality for itself and it's likely to stay there for long, so great are the advantages which people following the same skilled trade get from near neighborhood to one another. The mysteries of the trade become no mysteries, but as it were in the air and children learn many of them unconsciously, good work is appreciated, inventions, improvements, and machinery and processes in the general organization of the businesses have their merits promptly discussed. If one man starts a new idea, it is taken up by others and combined with suggestions of their own, and thus becomes a source of new ideas. And you can see one of the ways to look at this is like the more college graduates, the higher um, the, uh, the average wages, which suggests this kind of knowledge and human capital productivity spillovers are more salient, you know, the more educated the, the, the workforce. Okay, so that's spillovers. We got the cost advantages, we got the labor market advantages and the spillovers. All of these combine to lead to clusters of industries or clusters of firms within a specific industry. There are other benefits of kind of large urban size. One is this joint labor supply. Households with two earners, you know, uh, um, both partners are earners in separate industries or even within the same industry, you know, clustering of firms within a city makes it so uh, much easier to, uh, to locate, uh, to locate, to kind of co-locate together for both people to find a uh, job that they are satisfied with. And then also the social interactions, you know, you're, you know, you're likely to get along with people in your same, uh, in your same industry. And so even if you don't work at the same company, the fact that, you know, there are a bunch of people doing the same thing means like I'm going to be able to find like-minded people um, within that city. And you just, you know, you move to the middle of nowhere, it's going to be harder to, well, maybe not, you know, there's also the transaction cost of finding people to hang out with. But in general, you know, there are probably people that you share your same interest in, um, in the city that that uh, that you live in. Okay, what is the evidence? Um, like how potent are these uh, agglomeration uh, um, uh, economies, these, these external uh, returns uh, to scale? So one of the key papers here is this paper from Greenstone um, et al. And what they do is, um, you know, how, do, you know, how they, the, the question is like, how large are these external returns to scale and how much do they really matter? And so again, they're gonna use a natural experiment. And really what they're gonna do is they're gonna compare cities where a manufacturing, basically a firm locates there. And they're gonna compare that to uh, cities where the firm didn't locate. And what they're gonna look at is other firms in that same industry. So I put a manufacturing plant somewhere. What they're looking at is how do firms that are in a similar industry, what does their productivity look like? over the next couple of years compared to firms in the same industry in a city where that firm didn't locate. And so you basically got a treatment and a control group. Now, the way they're able to do this, basically come up with the right control city, you know, because cities are very different, right? So how do you come up with the right control city? What they do is they look at 
these factory openings. And oftentimes in industry magazines, it's listed, this is where you know BMW chose to open the factory. Here was their number two choice. They were choosing between these two locations. And so you could plausibly think those two are comparable. And so they have this for a bunch of factory openings. Here's where they located. Here was the number two choice. And that makes up our treatment group and our control group. Okay. And so basically when they look at the winter cities, basically looking at those firms, the spillovers, they see significant uh, spillovers in terms of productivity. All right. So you can see this is the difference between the winning city and the losing uh, city. Okay. And, you know, uh, zooming out to the macro, the consequence is, is what we all know, is that certain industries are constant. Certain industries knows this, they take advantage of agglomeration and certain industries are located in certain cities. So, you know, carpets are located in Dalton, costume jewelry in Providence, elevators are located, elevator industries in Indianapolis. And of course, video production is in LA. This basically tells you, um, so this get, get, gives you a bunch of different industries and like how how more concentrated is that industry in the area than we would expect? So, so there's basically 12 times more software companies in Seattle than we would expect based on its population. And so you can see, you know, these clusters of tech in terms of software, they are where you'd expect. Seattle, Bay Area, uh, Madison, and Atlanta. Basically Atlanta is like kind of like the tech hub of the South, or at least it was. Um, and then Madison, of course, because of the university, Finance, you know, you have the finance clusters in New York, Chicago, and Connecticut. Um, shipbuilding, you know, you have uh, Virginia Beach and Mobile, uh, Mobile, sorry. And then, you know, video production in LA, New York, and uh, New Orleans are the big, are the big ones. Of course, LA kind of dwarfs these um, other ones. It's just some, some other interesting ones. This is like I, eyewear, which is also concentrated in LA. LA has lots of clusters. I mean, LA has a film cost cluster and aerospace is the other other big one um, in LA. I believe also we're big in, in, in insurance, and we used to have like a lot of the uh, a lot of the Japanese car companies had headquarters here. But I believe at least Toyota has 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 moved. Um, okay, other ones: sound recording. As I said, insurance, aerospace. Um, all right. Okay. Now this last case study. So the last thing in this in this lecture is a case study. Um, that kind of goes over the difference between Silicon Valley taking advantage of agglomeration and Route 128, which is the original tech hub of the US. And this, this case study kind of covers why Route 128 failed and why Silicon Valley succeeded. I cover all of this in the video, uh, in the video I made, which is much more well-produced and has all sorts of fancy stuff uh, that, that I did. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have you watch the video, which will go through this case study um, uh, in depth. All right. 